Although they are little known warships, the Holland class destroyers are significant in naval history. These surface combatants were the largest and most heavily armed destroyers in the Swedish Navy and also served in the Colombian National Navy. Today we're investigating the Holland class destroyer, the Swedish naval response to the First Cold War. The Holland class destroyer has consistently captivated the naval enthusiasts with its exceptional features and elegant silhouettes. HMS Holland and HMS Småland of the Swedish Navy were pioneering examples of new generation warships crafted the answer to the evolving threat perceptions of the First Cold War. They were also the first Western surface combatants equipped with anti-ship missiles. In 1948, Sweden initiated a new defense acquisition program that involved modernizing its existing warships. However, the Korean War, which broke out two years later, changed the plans, leading Stockholm to build new surface combatants classified as Landskap Jogare, meaning province destroyers. At that time, the Swedish Navy designated its warship as Landskap Jogare, named after a province in Sweden. Sweden initially considered developing a surface combatant based on the earlier Öland class destroyer created in the early 1940s and intended to name it the modified Öland class. Nevertheless, the naval staff had thoroughly analyzed the naval battles of the previous World War and the ongoing Korean War. They requested a heavier ship that could carry all the new weapon systems and have many other improvements. Thus, a newly designed destroyer, the Holland class, emerged. Due to the change in the plan, the first ship, HMS Holland, was laid down in 1951 at the AB Jotaverken shipyard, even though she had already been ordered in 1948. The destroyer was launched on July 16, 1952 and commissioned on June 8, 1955. The second destroyer, HMS Smallland, was launched on October 23, 1952 and commissioned on January 12, 1956. She was built at the Eriksbase Mechaniska Veikstas AB shipyard. By the mid-1950s, the cruiser HMS Gotland was nearing the end of her service. Furthermore, the cruisers were big and costly, so the Swedish Navy intended to replace HMS 3 Kronur and HMS Yeta Leon with destroyers. As a result, Sweden ordered two more Holland class vessels, HMS Lapland and HMS Värmland, in 1955. Nevertheless, they turned out to be excessively large and costly as well. Thus, in 1958, the Swedish Navy cancelled the order in favor of the smaller Österjotland class destroyers. It is unclear whether Sweden originally intended the Holland class to be a missile destroyer. However, it is known that as early as 1944, the Swedish anti-ship missile program began based on the German V-1 and V-2 rockets that had crashed on the Swedish coast during the Second World War. One of these projects, the design work for the robot 315, commenced in 1949, two years before HMS Holland was laid down. The first trial of the missile took place in 1953. HMS Holland launched the robot 315 during a test in 1955, the year she was commissioned. By 1959, a total of 86 missile firings were conducted, eight of which were carried out by the Holland class destroyers. Nevertheless, the results were unsatisfactory. As a result, Sweden developed the robot 08 based on the French Nord Aviation CT-20 target missile, which Saab manufactured under license. Following successful trials, HMS Smoland was equipped with this anti-ship missile in 1966. One year later, HMS Holland received the Robot 08 firing capability. Consequently, they became the first Western surface combatants fitted with anti-ship missiles. Although the Robot 315 program was unsuccessful, HMS Holland became the first warship equipped with anti-ship missiles, even for testing purposes. In 1958, the Soviet Project 56 EM class destroyer Bidovi was equipped with the P1, whose NATO reporting name is SSN 1 Scrubber. Consequently, she became the first major surface combatant armed with operational anti ship missiles. In 1954, Colombia also ordered two modified Holland class destroyers. They were laid down one year later. The first ship, ARC Sieta de Agosto was launched on June 19, 1956 and commissioned on October 31, 1958. The second destroyer, ARC Veinte de Julio, was launched on June 26, 1956 
and commissioned on June 15, 1958. The hull was made of steel. The Swedish naval engineers opted for corrugated galvanized iron for the superstructure because previous experiences demonstrated that aluminum could melt in a fire. The design of the superstructure enabled the crew to access the entire ship without needing to go outside, thereby minimizing the risk of exposure to radioactive fallout. Furthermore, the Holland-class ships had no portholes and were equipped with internal air conditioning systems to enhance CBRN protection. Before the Holland-class, the Swedish destroyers had both turbine rooms located aft of the boiler area, rendering the machinery more vulnerable to shelling. To enhance survivability, the new ship had one steam turbine at the far front and the other behind the boiler area. These rooms were also reinforced with armor. The Holland class destroyer initially had the LW03 radar and M20 and M45 fire control systems. Later, the 9LV200 Mark II radar replaced the LW03 and Mark 45. The noise from the ship's propellers did not interfere with the sonar in a dome beneath the bow. However, at speeds exceeding 20 knots, the water flow around the dome caused complications. According to Jane's Fighting Ships 1981-1982 edition, the complement of the Holland class was 290 people. The ship had a length of 121 meters, a beam of 12.6 meters, and a draught of 4.5 meters. Its standard and fully loaded displacements were 2,800 and 3,400 tons, respectively. Two 29,000 horsepower Delaval double reaction geared steam turbines and two Pennewet boilers gave the destroyer a top speed of 35 knots. Its range was nearly 5,560 kilometers, in other words, 3,000 nautical miles. The Holland class destroyers of the Swedish Navy were armed with two 120 mm twin barrel Bufosh 12 cm Automat Cannon M50 naval guns. Each barrel, fed by two 52-round magazines, had a rate of fire of 40 rounds per minute. Its effective range was 9,000 and 19,100 meters against air and surface targets, respectively. Each turret featured three 103mm illumination rocket launchers on either side. The ships of the Swedish Navy were equipped with one Bufosh 57mm twin-barrel 57mm Automat Cannon M50 gun, which was later designated as the 57mm Torn Dubel Automat PS M50. The gun had a rate of fire of 130 rounds per minute for each barrel. The maximum range of the gun was 13,000 meters. However, its effective range was 5,000 meters and it could achieve an effective altitude of 5,500 meters against aerial targets. The Holland class destroyers of the Swedish Navy had six Bufosh 40mm single barrel 40mm Luftwaffe Automat Cannon M48 guns with a rate of fire of 300 rounds per minute. Its maximum range was 12,500 and 6,900 meters against surface and aerial targets, respectively. The Robot 08, also known as RB08, was controlled via radio command during the mid course phase. In the terminal phase, it activated its active radar homing system. The missile, armed with a 250 kg warhead, achieved a top speed of 900 km per hour and had a range of 70 km. The twin rail Mark 20 launcher for the Robot 08 was positioned behind the stern funnel with the missile stored directly beneath it. When equipped with cameras, it could also function as a reconnaissance drone. Initially, the Holland class ships of the Swedish Navy had two 533mm quadruple torpedo tubes. After installing the anti-ship missile launcher, the configuration was altered so that the forward tube had three and the aft one had five. The destroyer could launch the 533mm wire-controlled Torped 61 torpedoes, which had a speed of 45 knots and a range of 24 km. Its warhead weighed 250 kg. Two quadruple 37.5 cm Antut Boats Rakit PS M50 anti submarine rocket launchers were in the bow. The rocket, featuring a 100 kg warhead, had an effective range between 300 to 1200 meters. The Swedish destroyers had two depth charge launchers and could lay sea mines. Subsequently, a small landing platform for light helicopters, including the Bell 47 and Bell 206, was installed on the HMS Holland and HMS Smoland. Unlike the Swedish destroyers, the Colombian ships had three 120mm and four 40mm guns. They lacked a 57mm gun, anti-ship missiles, depth charges or mine-laying rails. Moreover, 
These destroyers featured a single quadruple 533mm torpedo tube and only one 37.5cm Antioch Boats Rakiet PS M50 anti-submarine rocket system. HMS Holland and HMS Smoland were periodically deployed to the Musco Naval Base in the mountains of Musco Island. Between the mid-1950s and the early 1980s, a destroyer flotilla of the Swedish Navy typically comprised one Holland-class destroyer, two öster jotland class destroyers and six torpedo or missile boats. These ships conducted numerous operations to hunt Soviet submarines. For instance, during an exercise on August 23, 1962, Swedish destroyers detected a submarine north of Fuare near Gotland and forced it to leave the area using depth charges. In 1974, a Swedish Coast Guard vessel spotted the periscope of a submarine near Kapelsam on Gotland. Subsequently, HMS Holland was dispatched to the scene and made contact, forcing the submarine to leave the Swedish waters. On September 18, 1980, the Swedish marine tugboat Ajax discovered a submarine off of Uto in the Stockholm archipelago. HMS Holland also participated in this 18-day hunt operation. However, the Holland-class destroyers were not involved in the infamous U-137 incident of 1981. Until the late 1970s, Swedish naval defense concepts including keeping sea lines open in the event of a war. The destroyers were crucial to this mission. However, they were costly to operate and required a large crew, placing an unbearable burden on small populated Sweden, which already maintained a sizable army and air force. As a result, Stockholm chose to reorganize the navy as a coastal defense force centered on missile boats and boat-sized corvettes. HMS Småland was decommissioned in 1979. Three years later, HMS Holland followed her sister. She was scrapped in 1985. Fortunately, HMS Småland has survived as a museum ship. If you happen to be in the Moritomon Marine Museum in Yotobori, you can still visit her. The Colombian National Navy also decommissioned ARC Veinte de Julio and ARC Siete de Augusto in 1984 and 1986 respectively. Thanks to the Sweden's policy of neutrality and the fact that the Third World War never broke out, the Holland-class destroyers never saw combat. However, they were pioneers in being equipped with anti-ship missiles. The leading Western navies would wait to replace the medium and large caliber guns with this weapon system until the 1970s. Thus, the Holland-class destroyer have earned a special place as a legend in naval history. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.